modern refrigeration. Chapter 19, Compressor Safety Components. Objectives, explain the ideal compressor operation conditions and requirements. Describe the use of operation of the compressor protection devices, such as overcurrent protection device, overload device, crank case pressure regulator, discharge line pressure switches, and discharge line thermostats. Explain the role of accumulators play in the system and how they accomplish their purpose. Objectives. Understand the components that maintain proper oil and refrigerant flow to the compressor. Explain the operation of oil separators, oil reservoirs, oil level regulators, and oil safety controls. Objectives summarize the purpose of vibration absorbers and the techniques for installing them. Explain the purpose of operations of crankcase heaters. Compressor overview. Compressor is the heart of the system. Now we spoke about this in our last chapter 18. The compressor must be supplied with clean oil and the liquid free vapor refrigerant. Very important point. Safety devices prevent damage and failure. Mechanical damage, motor winding damage, and overheating. Variables that safety devices monitor include current draw, head pressure, compressor temperature, and discharge line temperature. There is a compressor safety that is not mentioned in this chapter. Now, this is a short chapter. It's only 11 pages, I think. But there's, a, there's one major item. There's a major item that is in 95% of the homes turning on the air conditioning, and I would think at least that many, if not more, of commercial business air conditioning and that is the wall thermostat the thermostat that turns the system on that is the number one compressor safety device we have in america and i'll explain what this item is i'm sure you've used the thermostat before but inside that thermostat there's a what's called a time delay it can be mechanical a little micro switch or it can be electronic but pretty much in this modern day, every thermostat has a time delay. And the reason why, you don't want your compressor to turn off and on, off and on, back and forth within seconds of each other or at even minutes of each other, because it will cause the compressor to try to start when its pressure buildup is so high that it could stop the compressor from working or overheating. So what happens when you turn on your thermostat to have the air conditioner come on. For example, you either walk over and slip over the switch from off to cool, or you drop the temperature in this thermostat. Since most thermostats right now are digital and have a, a LED readout, you walk over to your thermostat and you hit the down temperature button. Let's say it's set at 77 and the house is 77 and you want to go down another temperature. So you walk over and hit the down button. First thing that happens is the screen lights up on the vast majority of them. The second time you hit that down button, it actually takes it from 77 to 76. At that point, you might or might not hear a click depending on the type of thermostat. But normally what happens, unless someone has overrode this control, the compressor doesn't come on. The system doesn't come on at all. 
at that point because it has a five, seven, or maybe even 10 minute time delay in it. So you can sit there and watch it and usually it says cool or cool on and that light's blinking. That, that one or two word sentence is just blinking, blinking. And what it's telling you, it's in time delay mode. If it's steady on, then it should be running. If it just says cool and it's not blinking, that means the system should be running. But if it's blinking, it's telling you it's in time delay. And this is something that some people in uh, homeowners, they don't understand that. So they're really warm. They come home from the weekend or from work and they hit the thermostat temperature down and they see this thermostat temperature is set below what the house is at that point and they don't hear anything happening. A lot of, the, a lot of them can hear their air conditioning system so they know when it's on and when it's not. And they'll find out that it's just not coming on. And they think that's something wrong with it. And sometimes before that five, seven, or ten minutes happens, they'll call a technician and say, hey, my air conditioner's not working. It's hot in my house. Come on out. It's uh, not a lot of service calls, but I would say it's probably sometime between five and ten percent of the service calls that I went on were for the thermostat operation. That's all it is. But that device can also be uh, disengaged where you do not have to wait. But it's safer for your compressor to use that delay. Overcurrent protection provided by circuit breakers or fuses. This picture is of a disconnect or circuit breaker box on a commercial package unit on a roof of a building. This has a dual purpose. The first purpose is to protect it if the system draws too many amps. The compressor's starting to lock up and it draws too many amps. It'll blow a fuse on this one. This is not a circuit breaker. This is a fuse box. The other thing it's there for is so when the technician is working on the system, uh, he can shut the power off to the system by the lever on the side. That way, Instead of shutting it off just at the breaker panel, which is down in the building, someone could go by it and flip it on and cause him to be shocked or killed by electrical current dealing with the wires in the unit. This is required by code even in homes. If an appliance is not within view of the circuit breaker box or the breaker panel in the home or business, it has to have a disconnect at the unit. Also current uh, high current can damage the indoor conductors uh, or the insulation, can cause short or ground fault circuits. Circuit is open, abnormally high current. Things will happen, including things like um, power surges and even lightning strikes. Um, in in uh, Alabama, where I had my business for 10 years, Lightning strikes, very popular there. <laughs> I think I saw more lightning in Alabama than I've ever did in my entire life. But uh, while your system's running, if the power lines or something near your house gets hit by lightning, it can transfer to that unit. It wants to be absorbed by something running. And it could blow out the side of the compressor, put a hole in it the size of a silver dollar. So that happens all the time. And these are very important protection devices.